Hello and welcome to the Business Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Holly Wharton. I've been an entrepreneur since 1999 and I know firsthand how difficult it can be to build a business without the right mindset. This is a podcast for those of us who struggle with showing up in our business with confidence and authenticity, who resist taking big action because of fears and doubts, who know deep down that it's possible to create something bigger and yet you're not. This podcast combines powerful strategies on how to upgrade your business mindset along with practical business tips to grow your business more easily in a way that feels aligned. This podcast features solo shows with me and also interviews with inspiring women entrepreneurs from around the world, including my monthly co-hosted episodes with Joe Casey. My goal is to help you grow your business more quickly and easily by transforming your mindset. For me, mindset work is a lifelong practice, and I want to help you make a habit out of mindset work. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now, let's get into this week's episode. Hello, and welcome to the Business Mindset Podcast, episode 258. This is your host, Holly Wharton, and I'm back with another solo episode. Today, I'm going to talk about the importance of stopping and evaluating and looking back and seeing just how far we've come. This is really, really important. And it's been kind of coming back into my awareness, the need to do this. It's happened several times lately in the last few days. And so I thought it was a topic that was worth discussing on the podcast because I suspect that this is something that's pretty common. I think a lot of us don't stop and take the time to look back and see just how far we've come. So this podcast is inspired by kind of what's been going on for me lately, but it's also inspired by a quote by author Idris Shah, who I will link to in the show notes. And this is such a great quote. I love it. So the quote goes like this. You have come a long way and you do not know it. You have a long way to go and you do know what that means. Let me read that again. You have come a long way and you do not know it. You have a long way to go and you do know what that means. Does that resonate with you at all? I experience this all the time. I am constantly setting goals, planning, taking action, looking ahead, doing the stuff I need to do, working towards my goals. I have a long way to go with some of those goals and I do know what that means, definitely. But I have come a long way. And oftentimes, I forget that. So in today's podcast, I want us to talk about, well, I'm going to talk about, and then I hope to get some feedback from you. I want to talk about how far we've come, how far I've come, how far you've come. And I want to encourage you to spend at least a few minutes thinking about how far you've come. Because I'm going to guess that you are into personal growth, into personal development. You're listening to the Business Mindset Podcast, so I think it's safe to say that you're interested in developing yourself, at least professionally, but probably also personally. So you're into growth, you're into looking ahead, you're into setting goals, and it can be so easy to forget to look back and see how far we've come because we're so focused on the now and the planning for the future. So let me ask you this. Where were you and what were you doing and who were you six months ago? Think about that for a second. So in doing this, I'm going to look through some of my journal entries from several months, several years ago, and I would like to encourage you to do the same because it can be easy to forget about where we were. So I'm recording this on the 27th of June, and I don't have a journal entry for the 27th of December of last year, because I don't write my journal every day, but I have a whole page of belief statements that I balanced on the 28th of December. So December last year, you know, as usual, years winding down, I'm kind of looking ahead, thinking about things I want to do. And I had recently been to this plant initiation ceremony with my friend Sanit that was really just enlightening and inspiring and fabulous. So some of the belief statements that I did, I clearly see my path forward and I easily walk it and I balanced for that. 
Now, at the end of last year, I knew big things were changing in my business. I kept talking about that. I really didn't know for the longest time what that looked like, what that meant, what I was going to do. And now I know that my path forward is very clearly focusing on writing books, quarterly books, and minimizing the one to one work that I do. So, yeah, that worked. I mean, I've come a long way. So that's something that has definitely shifted. I went from not knowing to having a really clear path. The next one that I did was I easily resist the temptation to make things difficult or hard work. Because hard work is one of those things that I'm constantly struggling against because I really instilled the habit of hard work in my first business. Which I ran for just over 10 years. So I'm still kind of trying to undo some of that stuff. And I feel like in recent months, I've started really paring things down. I am trying to make it easier for me to write. I'm ensuring that I do my monthly workations. I will probably start doing perhaps twice monthly workations.、I'm、still trying to figure out how to get that into the calendar. And I'm trying to remove the things that are getting in the way of writing. Such as complicated things like my meetup group. I just sent out a message to my meetup group saying that I'm shutting it down for various reasons. And ideally, what I want to do is just keep the people that I know who have come on my walks and take them out for walks. Meetup was, I was getting so many people who would cancel last minute, who wouldn't show up. It was a pain. So, I'm trying to simplify that by paring the group down to the people that I know really want to walk with me. And there we go, make that easier. I am reducing, I have already reduced the number of days per week that I take calls. So, I'm just usually doing calls twice a week instead of three times a week. And that's making it easier to get stuff done. The next statement I did was I easily and guiltlessly make time to be outdoors in nature. And I really feel like this year I'm doing the walk a thousand miles challenge again, partly to encourage me to get outdoors more often. And this year I'm not tracking all of my miles like I did last year. I'm just tracking nature miles. And I'm on track for that. So that has really worked. I am getting outdoors more often. I am getting outdoors consistently, regularly. Obviously, that has increased now that the weather is nicer, but it's work. So, I could go on. There's, I think, a total of 10 different belief statements that I worked on, but you get the idea. That's where I was six months ago. And I've made a lot of changes now based on those three beliefs that I balanced for. So, where were you six months ago? What were you doing six months ago? What were you thinking about six months ago? What were you worried about? What were you achieving? What have you achieved since then? How have things changed for you? How have things evolved? How have you grown in the last six months? So, in order to answer those questions, think back to where you were, what you were doing, how you felt six months ago, and that's December 2017. What were things like for you? Next question. Where were you one year ago? What were you doing a year ago? What were you feeling a year ago? What were your business and life like a year ago? So that's June 2017. What was going on for you back then? How have you changed since then? How are things different? How have you grown? How's your business grown? How have things changed? So for me, again, I don't have a journaling a lot around this time last year. So, I kind of picked through some things. And on the 28th of June, I journaled about the Akashic Records reading email that I had received. So, some of you have heard me mention Vicki Young, who does this really, really useful Akashic Records weekly email. So, she taps into your Akashic Records. Gets a little message from you for you from your record keepers and then draws an oracle card for you and writes out kind of how that relates to the message from your record keepers. So every week when I get these, I print them out, glue them into my journal on the left hand side, and then on the right hand side, I journal about the topic because often the record keepers will ask me questions and so I'll answer them in the journal. So the question they asked me was Holly. What is it that you wish you could start all over and do? 
This is the perfect time for you to take on the challenge and remake something into the perfect package that you planned it to be. So the thing that I came up with was my online course, which you may not know about because I did a terrible job of promoting it and I only sold a few people onto the course. I was really jazzed about it when I created it and then mindset shit got in the way and it didn't sell the way I wanted it to. So I ended up removing it from my website. So I did a bunch of journaling around the fact that wasn't happy with my online course. I say here, first thing that comes to my mind is my online course. It's been in the back of my head for months. I feel bad about it never taking off. I want the passive income. I want to work with people on a group level. I want to help people in that way. I want to have it available as an easy yes. I have fears around not being able to make it work again. Fears around launching to crickets. Fears around it being difficult. Lots of crap I need to clean. So I balanced just a handful of beliefs there. And I took the online course off my website because I just wasn't happy with it. And I have not yet replaced it with anything. Just last week, I posted in the Facebook group about asking people questions about what kinds of workshops they might want to do because I'm starting to get a clear idea of wanting to do online workshops for people where we learn a little bit of practical knowledge stuff and we do some heart-centered energy work to release blocks and reprogram beliefs around what you need to achieve whatever the thing is that we do. So one of the topics that I proposed was pitching yourself to podcasts because that's something that I've done a lot of and I love being on other people's podcasts and I love meeting new people and I love talking to new people and it's something that I see a lot of people having a problem with and it's certainly something that I had a problem with way back when I first started pitching myself to other people's shows. I had lots of issues that I had to work with so I've come a long way with that. So I'm thinking that in the future, yes, I would like an online course, but I just don't have clarity on what that looks like. I might want to start doing online courses related to my business mindset books, which I'm going to slowly start releasing second editions of. I don't know. I still haven't decided about my online course, but I got rid of the old one. And I think I'm going to play around with the individual workshops before I go back into an online course. So that's where I was a year ago, and that's where I am now. Stuff has changed, but I still don't have a definitive idea or plan as to what I'm going to do about that. Most importantly, not quite this time last year, it was around April, May of last year, was when I launched my heart-centered energy work. And that was a massive, massive change for me. That was a big shift in how I worked with people and it gave me a lot more freedom than the system that I was using before. So that was a huge shift and that was another thing that took me some time to develop and to channel and to put out into the world. So that's another massive thing that was going on just a little over a year ago. So again, where were you a year ago? What have you changed? What is different for you? How are you feeling different? What's the journey that you've been on? How are things better, different, worse, whatever, for you now compared to a year ago? Where were you three years ago? So that would be June 2015. What was going on for you back then? June 2015 was when I walked my first long distance trail, the South Downs Way, which is 100 miles. Now that's not business related, but everything's related. So I'm going to bring that up because that was a really important experience for me. It was a lot more challenging than I thought it would be. And it was the source of one of my first books. And I think one of the first books where I shared a lot of personal stuff, including how difficult it was for me to do that walk, just unexpectedly difficult. So I opened myself up in that book in a way I hadn't really before in my business mindset books, which will be changing in the second editions. I'm going to be sharing a lot more stories. And that was really scary. So that was a really important step outside my comfort zone with my books. And I think that every time we step outside our comfort zone, it kind of has a ripple effect in all other parts of our life and business. 
I was just looking through an old journal from that time where I had written my list of walks that I wanted to do. And I had like this really long trails in the States and I had them all mapped out in terms of what year I wanted to do them. And yeah, I haven't done any of those because I learned a lot from that first trail. And I learned that I really like to take my time and enjoy my walks. So I've kind of kept it easy rather than doing the crazy long North American trails. So lesson learned. So where were you three years ago? What was going on for you? What was different for you? How have things changed for you since then? And what were you up to five years ago? So that's June 2013. That was a really pivotal time for me because in late July 2013 was when I did my Psych K training. I've said many times in this podcast, my life is before and after Psych K because that was when I learned how powerful this mindset work is. And when I eventually added it to my social media business and then completely shifted my business altogether to focus on business mindset because I think it's so important and we don't talk about it enough. So that was a pivotal year for me. And that was five years ago. And when I look back and I think how much work I've done with myself using Psych K, using heart-centered energy work to shift my mindset and to shift my fears and to shift my blocks and to let go of those limiting beliefs and to reprogram positive, enhancing beliefs. It's been, I think this is the kind of most intense period of personal growth I've had in my entire life, the last five years from July 2013 to now. Massive, massive, massive growth massive changing. I have learned so much about myself. I've peeled off so many layers of crap. I have let go of so much stuff in my head that didn't serve me. It's been huge. I think this is the most definitive period of my life in terms of personal growth and development. So much has changed. I went from being really just low self-esteem, low self-confidence, really, really struggling to be visible, struggling to market myself, struggling to market my business, despite knowing all the practical actions that I needed to take. Yeah, I really struggled so much with that. And it all changed when I learned how to work with my mindset at a subconscious level. So the last five years have been a huge, huge, huge period of growth for me. I am not the same person. I was five years ago when I walked into that Psych K workshop. I'm absolutely a different person and I've grown so much. So who were you five years ago? How were you feeling five years ago? What were you doing five years ago? How have you changed in the last five years? Were they as life-changing for you as they were for me? Have a think. Go through your old journals. Look at what was going on for you five years ago. And what about 10 years ago? Where were you 10 years ago? How were things for you 10 years ago? So that's June 2008, and that feels like a lifetime ago to me. And again, that was another really pivotal year in my life. So in June 2008, I was still married to my ex-husband, still working in my first business, and having a really bad time of it. If you want more details about that, I'm not going to go into it here, but you can look for the old bonus episode I have from Shelby Forsythia's podcast, which you can find here on this podcast feed. I've imported the feed for that episode, so you can learn the details there of all my terrible unhappiness. Basically, it was a really dark, really unhappy, really, really bad period of my life. And that all changed one month later. July 24th, 2008, when I left my ex-husband. I continued to work with him in the business for another year, but just leaving that home with him was a massive, massive, massive change. Again, my life is before and after that relationship because it was so difficult and such a dark, dark, dark period of my life. So that was another pivotal year for me. That was a huge change. And at the time, leaving was the hardest thing I'd done. I was so scared. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know how I was going to do it. I didn't really have any friends where I was living. It was tough. And it was a huge change. 
and my life has been just exponentially growing in leaps and bounds ever since I made that decision. It was a life-changing year for me. Massive, massive, massive change. So going back to June 2008, what was going on for you? What was your life like? How were you feeling? How have things changed for you since then? Might have been a pivotal year for you like it was for me, or maybe it wasn't. But think about the big things that have happened to you, the big decisions you've made, the big changes you've made, the ways that you've grown over the last 10 years. Look back to who you were 10 years ago and compare that to who you are now. I was absolutely a different person back then. I don't know if I would have recognized myself if I met future me back then. I don't think I trusted in life. I don't think I had the faith that it could change, that it could get better. And then it did because I took action. So massive changes for me. Think about all the stuff that you've done, all the decisions you've made in the last 10 years, how you're different, how you've grown, what you've achieved. This is really, really important. Just skim over the years, maybe look year by year, go back through your old journals, read how you were feeling what your goals were, how your goals have changed, which of those goals you've achieved, and see just how much you've done. And I think a lot of times we only celebrate the big things in life and business, if that. Some of us don't even take the time to celebrate anything because we're all focusing on the future still. I think it's really important to take time and focus on celebrating the baby steps. Maybe you used to be afraid to send out an email to your list. I was just talking with Joe Casey on the episode that's going live next week, and I mentioned that I used to be terrified to send out an email to my list because I didn't want people to unsubscribe. Yeah, I've gotten over that now. I don't really care if people unsubscribe because I feel like that's kind of self-selecting and decluttering. But I used to be terrified. I used to be terrified of doing a solo podcast episode because I didn't think I could fill up at half an hour with interesting and useful and helpful things to say, which is why I started out this podcast with pure interviews, because I thought other people would have more important and interesting and useful things to say. And as it's evolved, I've done more and more solo episodes, and now this is pretty much half the podcast. So celebrate the little things. Celebrate the baby steps. Make yourself a sign in your office if you need a reminder to celebrate the baby steps. In this time, I have written four business mindset books and three walking books, and I'm about to release another walking book to make a total of eight. By the end of the year, I hope to have two more books out. That's 10. I always wanted to write books. I always wanted to be a writer. And I've wanted to self-publish since, I don't know, 2011? So finally doing it in 2016 was huge, huge, huge. And I was terrified. Who am I to write a book? And I did it anyway. So that's a massive achievement. And every single one of my books is an achievement. Did I celebrate them? Don't honestly remember. But I'm going to remind myself to celebrate from now on because a book is a huge achievement. So even if it feels small to you, celebrate it. Learn, get into the habit of celebrating the small stuff because every little baby step that takes you towards your goals is super, super important. So what can you do to look back and see how you've grown and celebrate your achievements? So like I said, look through all of your old journal entries. If you don't journal, oh well, look through your calendar maybe and see the things that you were doing and maybe kind of use that as a catalyst to trigger how you were feeling and to look back over your memories. Just look through stuff from the past and see how things have changed and what you've achieved since then. Make a list of your accomplishments. Maybe year by year, think back to the things that you've done each year, no matter how small. Celebrate the baby steps. Celebrate the tiny stuff because it all adds up. It's not just the big stuff that's important and that's worthy of being celebrated. It's all worthy of being celebrated because it all compounds. Take a look at your testimonials and look back over the clients that you've worked with in the last few years. Think about how things have changed in the way that you work with clients. Think about how much you've improved as a healer or a practitioner or a facilitator or a consultant. I'm sure you've grown professionally over the last few years, if not last few months. But we need to remind ourselves of this. 
maybe get some feedback from your business friends. If you have a mastermind or a master gut like I have or business friends, ask them for feedback. Ask them what they've seen and how you've grown since the group first started. It can be really, really helpful to see ourselves through other people's eyes and to hear what other people have to say about us because other people see things that we don't see. So it can be really, really useful. And look at all areas of your life, not just business, because everything is related. Look at your personal life. Look at your spiritual life. Look at your personal growth. Look at your health and well-being. How has that changed? Look at the sense of balance that you have in your life. Look at your money situation. Look at your social life, your relationships, your family. Look at all areas of your life and think about how you've grown and how you've changed And what the journey has looked like for you for the last 10 years, maybe even go beyond, go into the past, go 15, 20, 30 years, go however far back you want to, but take the time to look because you have come a long way and you do not know it. You have a long way to go and you do know what that means. So take the time out this week, please, I encourage you to just go through the past and celebrate everything that you can celebrate, even the little baby steps. And actually, I would love it if you would either hop into the Facebook group or drop me a line and let me know what you'd like to celebrate. Come celebrate in the Facebook group or send me an email or tweet to me or whatever. Send me maybe the top three things or a whole list of things or whatever you want to send me that you would like to celebrate and we'll celebrate together. How does that sound? I hope that sounds good. When I post this in the Facebook group, I mean, you've already heard me talk about myself for the last half hour, but maybe I will get the ball rolling by picking some things to celebrate and you can share as well. So please drop me a line. Let me know what you would like to celebrate. Let me know what you thought about this week's episode. You can email me at holly at hollywarden.com or you can find me at Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram and get in touch. I would love to give you a shout out on the show. I would also love to see you in my private Facebook group so we can continue the conversation there and continue the celebration there. If you head over to hollywarden.com forward slash group, you will be redirected to the Facebook group and I would love to see you in there. Finally, thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a quick review on Apple Podcasts or iTunes. It would mean the world to me. And keep your eyes peeled because I'm going to be launching a Patreon. You may remember from about two years ago, just shy of two years ago, I set up a Patreon account and then mentioned it on this podcast and then never did anything else with it. So I've been taking some time to look at how other authors use Patreon, how other podcasters use Patreon, and how I want to use it. So that might be an episode. I'm thinking about that because I was just thinking I really want someone else to do an episode on that, but maybe it's something that I have to do. So perhaps that will be coming in the future. But keep your ears peeled. I will mention it on the podcast. I'll also mention it online. And I think it will be useful for you to see how I'm using Patreon, how other people are using it, and how you might be able to use it for your business. Next week, I am back with another co-hosted episode with the fabulous Joe Casey. We are going to be talking about one of the biggest things that we've experienced in business and that we work with clients on, which is the fear or limiting belief of, what will people think? Will they like me? And that worry that we get when we put out a blog post a podcast episode, when we say anything online, what are people going to think of me? Now, some people suffer from this more than others. Some people, it looks like they just don't give a shit, which is fantastic, but it's something that a lot of us find really, really painful. So Joe and I talk about what our own journey has been like in dealing with these fears and how this shows up for us in business. Why this happens? Why do we have these fears? Why do we care what other people think of us? We talk about how it shows up in business, how it holds us back, why it's a problem and why we need to work on it. We talk about how perfectionism comes into play and why we need to get used to taking imperfect action. We talk about how this is related to resilience and how we can strengthen our resilience muscle, which is something we've talked about before, but it's always worth repeating because resilience is a very important part of business. 
We also mention why we need to step outside our comfort zone in all areas of our life, not just business. We talk about what you can do to change this and release these fears so you can take action more easily. We also mention very specific, practical baby steps that you can take to get used to speaking out and taking action, even if you're afraid of what people will think and whether or not they will like you. So that's all for today. I really look forward to seeing you next week, and I look forward to celebrating with you all the stuff that you've done in the last few years. Remember to visit hollywharton.com forward slash 258 for the show notes on this episode. And I will see you next week. Thank you so much and have a great week and enjoy your summer. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, enjoy your winter. I hope you got beautiful snow. All right. Thanks so much. Have a great week. Thank you so much for listening to the Business Mindset Podcast. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for the topics that were discussed at hollywharton.com. If you'd like to connect with other listeners and learn more about business mindset, join my private community for entrepreneurs at hollywharton.com forward slash group that will redirect you to the Facebook group. And if you enjoyed this episode, please remember to head over to iTunes and leave a quick review of this podcast. It just takes a minute. Thank you so much.